there's a war out there, old friend. A world war. And it's not about who's got the most bullets. It's about who controls the information. What we see and hear, how we work, what we think. It's all about the information. You want a war? You got a war. And there's no looking back. There's no forgetting. And there's no forgiving. I can see it all clearly now. The more we build, the more haters try to tear it down. The more we build. Now you listen to me. All of you. You hoodlums don't own these streets. go for the Sunday show. I don't know exactly how long this one's going to be. I did get a late start today and, you know, I definitely want to have this up tonight and it's, you know, it's going to be a while for encoding. So I hope everybody had a good week. I have three massive uh, projects that I'm working on right now. And I'm not talking about work. I'm talking about for YouTube. And uh, one of them I'm pretty excited about in a way. But in another way, I think it might be... uh, You'll see. But I'm telling you, when you guys see this one video I'm working on, the first thing I'll ask is that you please share it. Because this will never be promoted on YouTube at all and uh, I'm still deciding what I want to call it I think I'm going to call it YouTube's dirty little secret and uh, it's it's uh, sobering it's startling and it's very much needed and I'm actually uh, gonna I may finish that up tonight after this video here but You know, again, where to start? I, <laughs> I mean, where do I start? I mean, is there even going to be a, a show next Sunday? Is the power going to be on? Are we going to have a country? Are we going to be under martial law? I mean, unless you live in a cave, there's uh, no way you can ignore the political upheaval and the power struggle that's going on right now. And uh, I could talk about that. I I could use this whole next hour or so strictly for that. But I won't. I'm going to talk about a few other things. I want to actually clear up a couple things that I mentioned on my last video. Um, First of all, (laughs) you know, I got to tell you guys that Again, I just literally hit record and I start talking. I, By the time I'm done, I literally don't remember a lot of the things I said. And it's not until I'm editing with music and everything that I'm like, oh man, okay. You know, I tend to go down different roads that I don't mean to go down and I get sidetracked in my own head. And uh, I kind it's kind of like blacking out when I'm recording because I, I really don't have like a necessary plan. I just again start talking and but but I do I do want to clear a few things up. You know, I want to make it clear that I'm I'm not an anti-Semite at all. I'm not uh, I'm not anti anything. You know, I've told you guys before. I'm I'm a humanist. I don't believe in grouping people together in labels that have been given to us and hating a whole group of people that's just unrealistic you know i i believe that life is a a journey that is very very individual it's a very individual process 
and uh, you know I also believe that you know people can make a difference that affects the entire world that's been proven to us you know one person can make a difference and I've talked before about the uh, you know six degrees of separation where you know one person tells another person uh, or does it go in threes? I can never remember. It's three or six. It's either the three degrees of separation or the six. They might even have them both, but it's, you know, you tell one person, that person tells three, each one of them tell three each, and it just spreads and spreads and spreads. You know, it's, it's lightning quick these days with the internet, you know, almost instantaneously, but you know, I just want to clear that up. Number one, I'm not like an anti-Semite. But, you know, also, too, the, the controllers, they understand that, too. Uh, they understand that one person can make a difference, that information does spread very quickly, and they continuously use that against us to divide us, to, you know, back to the divide and conquer uh, military operation that we've been under. To divide us, to label people, label groups, you know, compartmentalize them, and, you know, on and on. But when I say Jews, you know, in my last video, I'm not talking about, you know, I'm not talking about every single person on the planet that, you know, identifies their ethnicity as Jewish or their religion as Jewish. I'm not talking about everybody. I mean, though, I did say, you know, several times, the Jews, the Jews, but, but you know, that's not at all what I'm inferring, as in grouping every single, you know, person on the planet. I'm talking about the controllers, and, the, you know, they are a very, very small amount of people, you know, compared to the amount of people on the planet. The people who control us, they're a small group of people, um, and they have all the money, they have all the power in the world. However, they have identified themselves as Jews. But that too can also be just for our own, you know, folly to their amusement. You know, they could just hide behind the shield of David or the star of David. But if, if I personally had to give them a name just as equal, I would call them Luciferians. Absolutely. I also wanted to uh, elaborate on something quickly that I mentioned in my last video. You know, I, I talked about the, uh, the greatest civilizations in the world and, and how they've averaged around a 200 year span. And uh, they all kind of generally follow the same progression. The reason I want to elaborate on that just for a minute is because at the end of the last video, I mentioned that um, religion, spirituality, it's all going to be brought to the foremost stage very soon. And technically it has been, it's been being pushed to the front stage, you know, with the whole uh, extreme uh, is Islamicist and the jihad and, you know, they, they've been pulling this religion to the front stage for many years now. And, um, you know, I did read that quote from Mark Zuckerberg, the uh, founder of Facebook, where he said on December the 25th that, um, you know, he, he's Jewish and then for years he wasn't religious at all. And now all of a sudden, you know, religion is very important to him. And he has left his, uh, you know, his atheist beliefs behind. But the reason I want to elaborate on this again is because I didn't mention the progression. And, you know, that way you can see basically where we're at in the progression of the civilization that we're currently a part of. You know, all, like I said, all of the greatest civilizations, they've only averaged around 200 years and they always follow the same progression. And normally it goes like this. They go from bondage to spiritual faith and then from spiritual faith to great courage. 
and then from courage to liberty, from liberty to abundance. Now, I could give you examples of every single progression that I'm mentioning here, but like I said, I, I want to cover uh, several things in this video, but I could give you, you know, Roman examples, European examples, I mean, Indian, Mayan, it's just, I could give you examples of, out of every progression that I'm mentioning here, but like I said, from liberty to abundance, and then from abundance to selfishness, then from selfishness to complacency, from complacency to apathy, and then from apathy to dependence. And once you're on dependence and you're fully dependent on them, you go back into bondage. So where do you think that our civilization is at on that list? Where, what part of the progression are we in? I mean, if I, if I had to give you my opinion, I'd say we're right at the end. We're right, well, let me, let me be more clear. Here, here's a little trick that I believe that these controllers are trying to, um, to manifest. Because if you've noticed, the beginning of the progression always starts from bondage to spiritual faith. But the end of the progression ends with from dependency back into bondage. So each civilization has the exact same beginning and ending point. It goes in a circle. You end in bondage, but then there's an awakening and you come out of bondage into spiritual faith. Like I said, they're pushing religion and faith and spirituality back to the foremost stage. Even coming from an atheist like Mark Zuckerberg, one of the richest men in the world. Like I said, he's a young man. Now, all of a sudden, he's, uh, he's all about his religion. It's very important to him, he said. But here's what I believe that they're trying to, um, the little magic trick that they're, they're pulling here. You know, this really all started in, in 2012, I guess, with the mainstream. And it, I, again, it started before that with the jihad and all of that, you know, being pushed into our uh, mainstream consciousness. But this reawakening, this uh, spiritual reawakening, I believe is going to be towards a false god. Now, I believe that for several reasons. My belief of that is because of the advancements in technology, but the Bible also says that. You know, we're going to go from the bondage that we're in now, because we're in complete bondage. You know, uh, there was a new study that came out recently, I think within the last few days, that listed the United States of America as the 49th nation rank. It's ranked the 49th in the world with regards to being free or the citizens having any type of freedom. We're the 49th ranked. That's how much freedom we don't have, and that's how much bondage we are in when you want to consider debt. You know, we're all debt slaves. We're all tax slaves. Nobody owns anything in the United States, at least none of us do. None of us on this level. You know, you think you own your house. You think you bought a piece of land. You think you got this. Well, you have that until they want it or come and get it, or you have that until you don't have the pieces of paper to pay for it with your property taxes and your school taxes. Or if they want to put a pipeline in or a carry a, a utility through, they can say, oh, eminent domain. Or if they want to put a new you know, road in or widen a highway, oh, eminent domain, we're going to take it. I don't care. What's that? Your fourth generation farmers that lived on, I don't care. We, we're taking this because we're fracking it and we've got to build a road here and we're going to put an oil, oil dike in and all that. I've seen this happen time and time and time and time again in Pennsylvania recently in the last 10 years, eight years. 
We own nothing. Nobody here owns anything. We're all in debt. You're never going to have a car. You're never going to have a house unless you're in debt for tens and tens and tens and tens of thousands of dollars. We're in complete bondage. So again, I'm going to coincide because the first progression is bondage back into spiritual faith. But again, you got to come out of bondage. You know, we're dependency back into bondage. That's the, that's the bottom rung. And then starting off your come from bondage into spiritual faith. So with this spiritual reawakening, you know, the jihad and, uh, you know, the Mark Zuckerberg coming out. Now, this really all started in 2012 with the whole Mayan calendar and there's going to be an awakening and the Maya, you know. Again, we're being awoken to a false god. The spiritual faith is technology to these people which also includes the mark of the beast. But we're they're going to usher in technological bondage like the world has never seen. So this progression is going to change for the rest of human history. Instead of going from dependency back into bondage and then starting all over again from bondage to spiritual faith, See, they're going to try to say that, oh, here we go. We're going to go from bondage to spiritual faith. But the spiritual faith is a lie. It's being handed to us. It's being handed to us to worship a false god. And it's being handed to us to usher in a form of technological bondage, again, that the world has never seen. With the RFID tracking, the chips, once we're chipped, the surveillance, they have it all set up. It's been being set up for the last 15, 16 years. Cameras, this, that, the NSA, the control, all your emails, your phone calls, surveillance, surveillance, surveillance. We're, we're not going to get out of this bondage until a real awakening happens. But either way, we're not going to get out of it without a fight. Once people realize that you as an American, you're one of the most drugged up, you're the sickest, you know, we're kept busy, we're the sickest beings on the planet, we're kept endlessly busy and amused with bread and circus, chasing money for slave wages because you can't afford anything that you need to buy without literally going into debt. We rent everything we think we own. We're all tax slaves. We're all debt slaves. And we're also medical guinea pigs. This hasn't changed for a long time under their control. And there's no fixing this without conflict. It's just not going to happen. And I believe they're setting one of the biggest conflicts up in, in our modern time right now for this week. I mean, this upcoming week up until the inauguration. I mean, you have communists coming out in full force. Everybody's cards are going to be on the table and anything can happen this week as far as them taking down the entire grid and it's lights out. But nothing's going to change until there's a conflict. But here's the thing, and, and I'm not going to talk about this. This isn't what I want to get into, but I want you to always remember this conflict, no matter what it is, no matter if it's at work with a friend, with a family member, conflict is what makes you great. Confliction. You know, debating, talking, working things out, having a conflict with someone and getting them, getting the answers you need or want or require and, and having them ask you what they need, what they want, what they require. Conflict will make you great, not your ability to hide from it. Because you're never going to grow. If you keep running from it, you're never going to grow. And, you know, like uh, I've, I've gotten a few emails since my last video and stuff. And 
I've said a few times during my other videos, I said, you know, especially with like, wake, especially with Tommy, like wake up and people that follow him, wake up, wake up. You're asleep. But I mean, really truthfully, what is it to be awake? What is an awakening? You know, like a, with the Mayan calendar thing in 2012, the awakening, what is it really? I know what it is, because it happened to me in 1996, and I'm not going to tell that story now, but I will tell that story one day soon. Here's the problem. You cannot go back. Once you're really awake, you cannot go back to sleep, and now you're fucked. There's no way to undo being awake. And you go through life wishing a lot of the times that you could just go back to sleep. Like I had a conversation recently in an email and I said, you know, the truth is like, there are many a times I've wished that I was just Joe Schmo. I did my 40 hours a week, you know, drank a few beers at night, watched TV, fell asleep, did it all over again. I really wish sometimes I was that dude. You know, I miss the days of ignorance. I miss the days about caring about stupid shit and roasting people and all this and that. Tearing other people down when we're all on the same level. For what? You know, I long for the days of not knowing what I know. And there's two types of, of, of awakenings. There's two sides of it. There's a spiritual awakening and then there's a mental awakening. And it's happening. It's happening in droves. People are now realizing that they're slaves. They're realizing that they've been fooled. Their whole life is a lie. Everything that has been handed to them is for a very specific purpose. Money, 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 control, control, control. What would you do in life? What would you do with your life? if it wasn't based around making money. If you weren't taught from day one by their system, if you weren't taught from day one how to memorize things in school, how to, because really truthfully, all school, little you know, grades, all that does is set you up to go to middle school. All that does is prepare you for high school. All that does is prepare you to go to college so that you can go get a job and be a tax slave and a debt slave. That's all it's set up for. What would you do with your life if it wasn't based around money? I mean, if it wasn't for money, would you even be hearing my voice right now? They designed the entire system and it goes back and back and back and back and back. It goes back to the Bible. Jesus had his own views of the bankers. God has a view of money. You know, like I said, I mentioned the cognitive bias that's been handed to us all in my last video and how, you know, reality has been given to you, your own reality. And then you automatically reinforce that alone. You, you just take it upon yourself to reinforce what's been planted into your foundation. Here's a question though, aside from the question of what, what you would do with your life if it wasn't based around making money, here's my other question. Who were you before they told you who you are? If you can answer just one of those two questions, you will start a complete awakening and figuring out what's really important in this life, what really matters in this life. 
who were you before they told you who you are? You know, like I said, this, the control, you have to understand this, the control of information. That's why, you know, at the beginning, my new intro, there's a war out there, old friend, a world war. And it's not about who got the most bullets. It's about who controls the information. That is the war. And it's been going on for a very, very, very long time. And it was all to hide the truth. And to make sure that just a small handful of people actually know the truth. But it gets silenced. That's like a comment somebody made uh, on that last video. I said, you know, we can go back and forth. I think it was uh, Bo, man. I said, we can go back and forth on this all day because you're going to have your cognitive bias and be able to find information and back it up. I could say uh, Timbuktu was a, an alien city and uh, the Anunnaki lived there. And I will find information to back that up. That's what I'm telling you. It does. See, here's the thing. And uh, I don't want to get sidetracked. Pray for discernment. God, please bless me with the gift of discernment. That is the only way that you're going to discern what's real and what's true. It comes from God because everything else is just out there for you to latch on to. Take you up the ladder. You can get off that ladder again anytime you want. Anything UFOs. You could spend the rest of your life studying UFOs and Roswell and and how there's a secret pact between uh, the government of the United States and gray aliens and blah. You could spend the next 50 years of your life on Area 51 and okay, that it's not real. The ladder is very thin at the top. But you have to understand that this has been going on for a very, very long time. And the way they did it in our most recent time was the Romans had shut down the Neoplatonic education system. They shut it down in the 6th century. And it was all done by Justin the Emperor. He, he, was, uh, he was a criminal. And the reason all of this exists, this big illusion that we live in right now, is so that these aristocratic elite Luciferians, these inbred, blood-drinking psychopaths, it's all so they could take over the world. So they went after the truth and they took it and they hid it in the Vatican, in the vaults. And then they introduced their lies. Aristotle, Darwin, Newton, Einstein. And it's never stopped. It's never stopped. You know, that's like Stephen Hawking. He's supposed to be this genius, you know, uh, academic that uh, for fun plays around with, uh, you know, theories of what God would do if he'd come to the, like, okay, you've seen him. It's the guy in the wheelchair that talks with the computer, okay? Here's what people have said about Stephen Hawking. Stephen Hawking has a extreme case of mental retardation. He's completely retarded. And it's a big joke to these controllers to keep propping this guy up. And the information that's coming through that computer is not coming from Stephen Hawking. It's coming from them. 
he's just this this uh, icon of you know human intelligence here's your genius human look at him here's your genius I'm not saying that's true but what I'm telling you is there are people that genuinely uh, believe that Stephen Hawking is massively retarded and all of those little comes from them to sidetrack people to keep this thing going that they started in the sixth century with again Aristotle and Newton and Einstein and Darwin you know here's Hawking now here's your version of a human genius and it's I mean these once the truth comes out once the truth comes out these people will go down as idiots you know but here's the thing they played their part they you know got the awards and they wrote the books and they were you know esteemed by their colleagues and you know a lot of their stuff still can't be proven there's still only theories like gravity still has not been proven but you know these are the men that were put up on the pedestals of of human you know they they represented like the knowledge and you know the uh, they have more knowledge than anybody else and their theories are still taught today. But yet they gave no glory to God, the one who designed all of this. And they really gave no glory to truth. The people that put them out are hiding the truth. They control the truth. It's a big joke. It's a big joke on all of us. We're the ones that are being fooled. And you know, you have, again, humans, men, women that dedicate their entire life to science or, you know, to studying Einstein or relativity. And, you know, I mean, it's a joke. You don't get it? You know, it's like Obama getting the uh, Nobel Peace Prize. Meanwhile, in reality, his decisions and his policies have caused the death of hundreds of thousands of Iraqis and Syrians and Libyans. You know, Benghazi, just to name one instance, but yet he gets the Nobel Peace Prize. I mean, how can somebody with so much blood on their hands be awarded with a peace prize it's a joke wake up you know technically i didn't want to really get into that stuff i just wanted to touch on a few things and bring you up to speed i wanted to you know clear a couple things up from the last video but um i want to change gears here and talk about a caller that called into true freeman a few days ago uh let me hit play on this i'm gonna tell you why i follow tommy i follow tommy and this is the last thing i'm saying i'm thinking real quick i follow tommy brother because some of the fact is tommy brings up to my knowledge a certain thing and certain issues that I can point out to other people and say, look, I'm not the only one that thinks this way. I'm not the only one that sees this way. I'm not the only one that does this. Now, as far as me being a Tommy fan, a solo nation, all that stuff, I'm, I, I never consider myself a solo nation fan. I consider myself a Tommy follower and one of his people that listen to him. And which, which, is cool, which is cool and which is your right and I respect your right to do that and you have every right to do that and I don't look at you any different by saying you like Tommy I don't brother I just want you to understand that man look what you brought to my show man respect man I have to respect your decisions and opinions go ahead bro I just want to make that clear and he brings things to the light that I can, I can sit down with my sister, I can sit down with a young brother or a young sister and say, look, y'all, y'all see this, y'all see how bad this is? Y'all need to change. And the reason why I like his teaching sometimes is because 
that teaching is not always going to be spoon fed and showing people, look, this is the way things got to go. Let's maybe see God's best way. I really believe in my heart. This is me believing. I believe in my heart. Tom, he really wants to see the community and let community change. But he has a way of doing it by self love and showing y'all love. Somebody the Black River is going to show the preach y'all to y'all and slap you on the back and tell you good job. I'm going to show you the shit that you ain't doing. I'm going to show you the downfall you ain't doing. And for that reason, I'm fucked with that thing. Nah, I, 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 I respect that. Then I respect your right to do so. I, re- I respect that, bro. And you're still more than welcome to call into my show, even though you like Tommy. You being respectful to me. I'm going to keep on making that clear. Go ahead, brother. And even and one more, that's the last thing I say. Even though I respect Tommy and I fuck well, I'm never going to troll nobody and I'm not going to call and play around on the phone and do all that stuff because guess what? As a Tommy fan or whatever, I'm going to set the example right to show. If you believe in somebody, show that person in a good light. Because all them trolls that's doing all that shit, I don't believe that, that, that that's representative. They sold a nation. That's not representative sold a nation trolling somebody doing that. Well, 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 that is representing the Soto Nation, but that's not conducive to what so-called Soto Nation wants to be presented as. Go ahead, brother. I'm telling you, man. You go ahead. I mean, I... I, 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 I it is what it is, brother. It is what it is. Like, you always get from it. It is what it is. It's going to be what it's going to be. Hopefully, I can proceed to continue some of that conversation. Maybe one day to have a thing in your life, you know what? Go back to 13, I said a different way. And, but at the same time, you're going to be mad because you are a man. You're going to do what you feel like you need to do, brother. Right. And that's all I got to say, man. Oh, that's respect, bro. Call in any time, man. You- well, wow. Okay, I mean, first of all, just let me get a uh, shout out to True Freeman. It's hard, it's hard to have a, a live show like that, I think. It seems like it is. I don't know. You know, you're going to deal with all types of people. Trolls. Stuff like that. I, I'm not... Uh, I'm not calling this caller here a troll at all. It's not, I mean, no disrespect. Everybody's entitled to their opinion. But the reason why I want to cover this and the reason why... I want to bring up a few points is not only because I couldn't believe what this guy was saying, but, and this was a few days ago. I know that uh, Scorpio had kind of made a mention about this and, and actually a few other people in the chat had said, wow, like, you know, if, the, if there has ever been a better example of truly how dangerous Tommy Sotomayor is with his influence, this is the perfect example. This is the perfect example of that. You know, this young man, I think uh, later somebody had mentioned he might be in his 30s or something, which is still relatively young. Um... It's startling to hear people talk about Tommy that way because it's almost like what they're doing is they're ignoring 98% of the truth to hold on to 2% of what they want to hear or what they need to hear. Ignore 98% of it, hold on to 2% of it. And, you know, I want to compare, and actually this is the second time or maybe third time I'm doing this. I've, I've compared Tommy to Charles Manson and I've compared his, um, his fans to a cult. And, uh, a lot of the things that this young man had said, that this caller had said to true about Tommy, I just recall reading so many different things that people have said about Charlie Manson. 
Um, and I'm, these are verbatim quotes that I'm going to, I'm just going to go over a couple. Uh, one of the uh, reoccurring things that would happen with people who followed Charlie Manson was they wanted to learn to be like him and they wanted to learn to act like he does. They wanted to uh, believe in, in uh, Charlie Manson. They wanted to believe in what he was saying. The majority of the Manson family consisted of mostly young, vulnerable women, and they, he only had a couple male followers. Compare that to Tommy Sotomayor and the Soto Nation, where his, and I'm throwing up quotations, his family consists of mostly young, vulnerable men instead of women like the Manson family and does have a few female followers where the Manson family had a few male followers but statistically they're the same it's lopsided you know you you have a, a mass amount of males compared to females or a mass amount of females compared to males another thing that coincides with the Manson family and Soto Nation is that Charlie Manson kept a very close watch and he kept full control over the family members. Uh, they all lived together when they went out into public to make money or for prostitution because that was one of their big money makers. Uh, they always went with escorts, either Charlie himself or one of the men. They, uh, they, um, made sure that these girls couldn't talk to anybody they wanted to. I mean, they kept full control over these young women. You know, he, Charlie Manson didn't want any outside influence at all to sway his followers from his teachings. Similarly, when you go to a, a Tommy Sotomayor show, his family keeps a very close eye on you. And the second that you say something that is either influential or goes against Tommy's teachings, you get banned, you get kicked, you get booted, you know. Very similar. You know, Charles Manson wanted full control to manipulate his followers. You know, there, there was no books that were allowed at the Spawn Ranch where they lived. They, they weren't allowed to have any outside material. Again, Tommy maintains full control of, put it this way, he controls everything he absolutely can. And if he could physically control people, he, I mean, you know, meaning if they all lived together in his house, believe me, <laughs> they'd be a cult. They are a cult. Again, you know, Tommy allows no outside influence during his shows. You're either going to go along with what he says or you're just going to be silenced. Charlie Manson did the exact same thing. But again, if there was ever a better example of how dangerous Tommy Sotomayor is and his influence is, uh, I, I'm down with Tommy because, you know, what he says, I, I can tell my, my brothers and my sisters. I, I can sit them down and tell them, you know, this, this, that, and a third. And, you know, uh, I really believe in his heart that Tommy cares about black people and wants them to, you know, be better people. Sir, believe me, believe me. You are under the influence of a man that rarely ever is going to elicit any real human emotions. So everything that you've built into him, all these things that you believe, all of these things that you believe are positive, it's all an illusion. Tommy is a master manipulator because how can you take it that type of a stance for a man who had stated that he wants to be the reason 
that the majority of black women are killed in gas chambers that are burned in gas chambers like the Nazis did to the Jews in Auschwitz. How is that learning from Tommy? What did you learn there? How are you sharing that with your family? How Tommy wakes up every day to turn on the news and hopes that there was another killing of a black man by a cop. What are you learning there, sir? What did you learn by Tommy's teaching? How is telling white people to shoot, you know, a group of young black men that might come up to you, shoot them on sight, then ask questions? What, what did you learn from Tommy? How are you going to share that with your little brother, your little sister? Or stealing over $100,000 for a movie that was never intended to come out anyway? What'd you learn by that? Or maybe you've learned something from uh, Tommy using his own daughter as clickbait by saying that he's being investigated for incest and statutory rape of his own daughter. How, how are those teachings, friend? Uh, Tommy's teachings, his good heart, that he really wants to see black people do better and come up. Though he will throw his own flesh and blood under the bus. And if it wasn't for people like me or M. Mitchell or True Freeman and, and several other people, we were able to stop that before it actually got worse. Before he continued on with this full-fledged lie because he wanted to start raising money for a fake legal defense fund. You know, we're, we tried to save his daughter from a lifetime of future humiliation by bringing this out and putting it out for everybody to, 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 to look at, which caused him to change everything around, bury it under a dead channel, change titles, do this, do that. It's all documented. What did you learn from that? How is that helping, you know, bring black people up? Maybe ha having your GoFundMe shut down for fraud. What'd you learn from Tommy there? Or your Patreon shut down for hate speech? Maybe you want to steal copyrighted music, lyrics, harmonies, you know, hooks, and then resell them on a web page. While you try to continuously silence other people's free speech. I mean, I literally cannot believe what this caller said. And again, that just goes to show you just how truly dangerous Tommy Sotomayor is and his influence with people, young men. And let me let you in on a little secret. You know, Tommy had uh, recently, I know in the last few months, had started mentioning, he'll pull, he'll pull up this picture of this black woman who has natural hair, everything, this and that. And he continuously touts, well, it's because of me. I got this letter, this email, and this young lady here said, Tommy, I cha you changed my life. I'm all natural now. I don't wear weaves anymore, blah, 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 okay? Really, Tommy. So that's your one example out of the 50-some million people in the United States which you have 98% of your content is burying them, dehumanizing, putting them down, putting the entire black race under the bus. That is what Tommy Sotomayor does. But he has this one picture of a black woman who has natural hair, and he continuously says it's because of him and his platform. See, this is what I do. One person out of over 50 million people that you have continuously, relentlessly thrown under the bus for a little bit of financial gain for your pieces of paper. But Tommy is uh, 
you believe Tom, you you believe in your heart and Tommy's heart that that he he wants to see black people do good. No, he doesn't, sir. I feel bad for people like you that are so lost in the illusion of Tommy Sotomayor. Because you can say all day and all night, well, I don't listen to this, but I listen to that. And I don't, I'm not a fan of this. But then when he does, it don't matter. Every word that falls out of his mouth is influencing you. Every word. You know, is, is this uh, the type of mentor that, that you're looking for? Let me play this clip here. Let me be honest. Will I use that perceived prejudice against you? Well, yes, I will if I can. If I know you have white guilt and I'm able to use it to get an advantage, well, then yes, I will do it. If that was a way I could guilt some white chicks into fucking me because if they didn't, I would tell them that they were racist, I would do it in a heartbeat. I would. I would do it in a heartbeat. If I could get a white person to hire me, because if they didn't, they would be perceived as racist, I would use it in a heartbeat. Hence why you should be guiltless. Because I'm not going to make you guiltless. Human nature is to use whatever advantage that we have to get what makes our lives more comfortable. That's not really true, Tommy. Not to the level you've taken it at where you justify lying, stealing, cheating, you know, so you can have money. I mean, that's, so there's another uh, life lesson you can learn from Tommy Sotomayor. You know, here's the one thing that that reminds me of, and I was thinking about this the other day. With being in the sector and, you know, the L.A.'s of the world or the Slap of Dawn's and other people, you know, I, I'm, I'm becoming more and more baffled as to why the majority of black people, well, I can't say that because I don't know what the actual number is. All I know is what I hear in this sector, okay? So I, let, let me retract that. But I don't understand why people like L.A. or like, you know, other people. Oh, we'll just say L.A., screw it. You know, why they don't take, because he represents a a bunch of people, I'm sure. You know what I mean? So, specifically talking about people like L.A., why, it baffles me as to why they don't take any pride in being an American. Now, I'm sure right then and there, you know, everybody has an outburst right at that second. Because everybody has a reason. But I'm, I'm just looking at it like this. I guarantee you that a lot of black people in this country have a way longer lineage of being an American or being in America than what the majority of other people do in this country right now today. Right now today. You know... If you want to talk about slavery or ancestors who have, they are the ones who literally built early America. And, you know, the lineage goes back much further than the majority of most of these European Americans who uh, immigrated here today. The reason it reminds me of that is because like, here we have Tommy again, teaching people how to take advantage as if, you know, and he always has to separate race. Always, 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 always has to divide and conquer, divide, divide, divide. You know, time and time again, and if you think about it, there have been many black leaders that get pushed to the top. But they continuously have a very similar message, and it's a continuous brainwashing of separation, separation, separation's the answer. I'm, I'm putting in quotations. What they're really doing is the military operation of divide and conquer. But, you know, we need a separate state. We need this. That's the answer. That's going to make everything better. 
divide, divide, separate, we're different, separate, divide, divide, but yet the majority of black people have every single right to America more so than a lot of other people that are here today that are in the same boat, I'm saying. And I just don't understand why, I mean, I can't say I don't understand because I know why. That's why it's always been handed down by them. Divide, 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 you're different, divide, you're different. But the reality is you have a very strong American lineage, more so than a lot of people that are here right now. I could talk about this for a day straight. I just, you know, I really wish at the end of the day, people would just realize what their own worth and potential is. Your own worth and potential. Don't worry about, you know, but I mean, again, here you have to, you have to figure out who you were before they told you who you are. You can't do anything until you figure that out first. But you know, Tommy with, again, just beating the drum of separation, separation. I mean, a lot of these white people that are in the country today had nothing to do with slavery. They, their ancestors weren't even in the country when slavery was going on. Slavery was already over before a lot of these white people got here that are in the country today. You know, one of the biggest time frames of the uh, immigration was early 1900s. Very, very, very few people down here with all of us, we're all in the same boat. Very few of them had anything to do with slavery at all. And the controllers know that, but they're never going to stop pushing that. And they're never going to stop propping up black leaders to remind you of that. Control, control, control. You know, and it's generation after generation after generation. Like, what are you leaving for your kids right now today? Has it gotten better or has it gotten worse? I mean, what are you giving your kids right now? What are you teaching them right now? I mean, is it still going to be separation, divide, conquer, divide, enemy, enemy, when 99% of the white people in this country right now weren't even here? Their ancestors weren't even here when slavery was going on in the in in America. I mean, when does this cycle stop? When is there going to be a black leader that steps up and says, "Hey, I'm an American. My lineage goes back hundreds of years. We want changes." We're sick of the separation. We're sick of this. We're sick of the, the, you know, relying on 200 years of history and still using it to create anger, frustration, divide. I mean, people have to start to understand how much control is over their life and how out of control you are in your own life. And it's, it surrounds us. It's all around us. Go to any store right now, be it Walmart. Well, not Walmart. Go to a smaller one, a dollar store or, you know, a dollar general or something. What are you going to see if you have little kids in the toy aisle? You're going to see toy guns, army soldiers for the boys, and you're going to see little girl dolls that look like prostitutes. Here, kids, have at it. When is the cycle going to stop? When's it going to change? I mean, because I'm telling you something. If you don't do right by your kids, this system that they have set up for us, <laughs> that it's all set up for your kids to take them 
to teach them, to brainwash them, to keep them in this cycle, in the cycle. You know, like Brother Polite. I mean, I, I mentioned this last time, like, I, it, I, I can't get past the whole, you know, oh, well, the reason why things are so messed up is because um, back 200 years ago, 300 years ago in slavery times, uh, th there was a, a, some black slaves were made to have sex with their own mother. You know, young Pharaoh has said something very similar to that, where, oh, uh, you know, uh, uh, black slaves were made to have sex with their mother. That's why today, 200 years later, uh, black men molest little boys and girls in, in the black community. Really? Really? So let's just say that this did happen. Okay, let's say that that actually did happen. I mean, there's nobody alive today that was a witness to that, number one. Number two, you're getting your information from the Jewish controlled books, the journals, the quarterlies, what have you, okay? So these stories have gotten handed down from them. You know, and it was printed at some point in time, but let's just say that in reality, this actually did happen. Do you really believe that there are still the like genetic cues in your DNA that cause you to consciously act out in certain manners that Brother Polite explains or young Pharaoh explains, abuse, molestation, neglect? abandonment, this, this, that, and that. I mean, you're telling me that every single black person, every single black American living today, they have a direct genetic predisposition because there was a story of a black man being forced to have sex with his own mother. Now, this could have been one, one instance, this could have been two, five, this could have been 10, 20 instances. I mean, how many accounts are there of this happening? Even if there was 50, let's say this, th there's 50 accounts of this happening. You're telling me that the over 50 million black Americans in the country today They have a genetic predisposition because of something that happened over 200 years ago. A, a f you know. Really? Okay. A answer this for me then, okay? To this day, why do you have to smack your child's hand when they reach for a hot burner on the stove? I mean, generation after generation after generation after generation, you still to this day, you have to smack a child's hand when they go to reach for a hot burner. Now you would think, I mean, because if what you're saying is true, over 200 years ago, several stories of black men being forced to have sex with them, that's the cause of all kinds of things that go on in the country today. Okay, that's your stance on that. But yet, to this day, we still have to smack a child's hand away from a hot burner. You don't think that in, a human would have learned by now, genetically, because somebody had to have been burned at some point in time. You don't think that they would have learned by now, like it'd be in our human nature, we would have a human predisposition to not touch a hot stove? That's why I say it's bullshit. It's an excuse. It's all bullshit. And I don't know where it's being handed down from. And I don't know why you continue to perpetrate such bullshit. To continue to create anger, hate, divide. While again, at the same time, hiding who the real enemies are. None of you want to build. 
You've proven that. Each and every single one of these leaders have proven they don't care about building unless there's dollar signs attached to it. When is somebody really for real going to step up and say, listen, here it is. And we are going to build and we're going to move forward. You know, that's like um, John McCain, who was a uh, POW in Vietnam. He got shot down and he, he ejected. He was, an, um, he was in the Air Force. He got shot down. He ejected out of the plane. He broke his arm. And then when he finally did, you know, land, he almost drowned with his own parachute. But when, when the Vietnamese found him, they then crushed it, they crushed it, his uh, shoulder with the butt of the rifle. He was imprisoned, he was tortured, he was starved, he was beaten. This went on for several years, okay? But his own son, James McCain, enlisted in the Marine Corps at age 17. Now, you mean to tell me the trauma that his dad suffered being shot down, broken arm, being ejected, being beaten, almost drowned, crushed his shoulder, tortured, starved. For years and years this went on. His own son, his very next generation, went to the Marines, enlisted to the Marines at age 17. That's just one generation. We're not talking 200 years of history that you want to say is, is, is the reason. Uh, like I said, it could have happened. Maybe it did. But I, there's no way that this is a continuation, a predisposition. Because why, again, why would his son want to join a force that was responsible for inflicting so much suffering and pain? on his dad you'd think he'd have a genetic predisposition to avoid that again that's why i say it's bullshit i'm gonna wrap this up i have so much more to talk about but it's already getting late i want to start encoding this now so i can have it up for uh this evening and um, I want to give a shout out to my Patreons and a shout out to my majors, Scorpio and Kelly. And um, I do have another major, but they are undercover in a secret op right at the moment. So I can't blow their cover, but I do have three majors in the covert radio army. I have a few changes coming up too. Um, we're going to have a couple of blog, or at least one blog launched here real soon, authored by one of the Patreons. And um, that's one of the perks. I uh, also want you guys to check out my other channels. I do have a few videos coming up on those. And uh, yeah, that's about it. I mean, I feel like I just jumped off a cliff. I, you know, like I just left you guys hanging, but really I want to, get this uh, encoded so I can have it out to you tonight subscribe check out my other channels you guys take care have a good day